Welcome everyone to Geek Card, a show that takes all the stuff you love and jams it into 10 minutes. I'm your host, Andrew Young, and well, with me usually is my co-host, Mr. Green. We're at the Silver Snail in Toronto, and I think he's gotten distracted. Um, I don't know where he is right now, but... Oh. What? Yeah, we're kind of, we're doing something right now. Are we interrupting your reading? Yeah, I was wondering to read the latest issue of uh, FBP. Well, can it wait until we're done this intro? What do you mean? We came here to, to, to put on a show. We're going to be talking about the best of the best yearly geek events. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of good things that around Toronto. There's a lot of great stuff. We're also going to be talking to a number of Canadian comic creators oh, that are in the area. Absolutely. There's can't a ton kick, of them. Yeah, you can't kick over a rock without finding one. That's what I hear. Why don't you guys check out the best of the best yearly geek events? Hey, welcome to the best of the best, where we tell you about some of the best things in the GTA, and this week we're looking at yearly geek events. Cool. Yes, and where else to start but with the Toronto Comic Arts Festival, TCAF. Oh, it's a great show. Since 2009, it's been a yearly event that happens at the beginning of May in the Toronto Reference Library, and this is a chance where comic fans and comic creators get together. Next up, Fan Expo Canada. This is your everything fan fest. Whether you love comics, sci-fi, yeah. horror, or just film and television in general, this is the place for you. And this year it's celebrating its 20th anniversary. Yeah, it's it's a great show. I actually got to meet Lance Henriksen there a few years ago and one of the greatest moments of my life. Speaking of horror and sci-fi fans, one can't forget the Toronto After Dark Film Festival. Happening just before Halloween, it's nine days of genre goodness. It's such a great festival. If you love horror, you love sci-fi, those are great things. But another thing that's really great about this festival is you get to see some interesting foreign films, films you may not always get to see. Like I got to see Iga, which is this great Indian film about a reincarnated soul as a fly looking for revenge. Can't beat that. There's a lot of Canadian comic creators right now working on some of the biggest books in the industry and some of the most interesting indie books in the industry. Oh no, absolutely. It's, this town has become like a mecca for, for comic creators. If you draw, you kind of have to think about like, well, what can I do here? I can't just go get hired at like, you know, some Madison Avenue ad agency. But we can do comics. You know you're gonna get a bunch of geeks and, <laughs> and comic creators, you know, congregating there. Not just comics, but music, film. Uh, so it's just a really creative hub. As outsiders to that, uh, location, uh, we bring a unique perspective, um, so maybe we can kind of see things differently. What do you think when you think about Toronto like that could possibly make it so conducive? Because there's so many great Canadian creators in the Toronto area. Like, what do you think it is about this area that attracts people or generates the creation of such amazing works? My working theory it's something in the water. Uh, uh, beyond that, I don't know, it's just a great city and it's really. There's a lot to see here. There's a lot of culture, not just comics, but music, film. Uh, so it's just a really creative hub in general. Uh, and a lot of my friends live here, so obviously that <laughs> contributes. I think maybe a lot of creatively inclined people don't have those those lucrative opportunities that are easy to stumble into. Right. And so the options are, it's, like, it's not like I can draw comics or I can draw something else. It's like I can draw comics or I can work at Starbucks. So yeah. comics win. I mean, that hunger. That hunger, is, that, is yeah. that what makes Canadian creators so good at comics? I don't know that that's a Canadian thing. I know that all of the people that I came up with had it, and they all happen to be Canadian. Mm. So anecdotal evidence suggests yes, <laughs> but you know, I wouldn't publish that in a journal. Right. You peer peer, peer review yet. might destroy that assumption, but I'm going to go with a tentative yes. Okay. What's the craziest idea that you've ever had specifically for like a Canadian based superhero? Okay, if by crazy you mean like horrible idea. <laughs> well, okay. We could take some of that too. Yeah, so this is crazy and just bad, bad idea. Okay. okay. So sometime, and I, t I totally blame the 90s. So this happened in the 90s. Tim Levens and I tried to create a Canadian superhero team and they were named uh, North Force. And force was even spelled F period, O period, R period, C period, E period. So totally 90s. Yeah. To top it all off, the one hero that I, that I think is the craziest and worst of the group was a woman <laughs> named woman named Wrangler. She came from Calgary, former RCMP officer, 
injured in the line of duty, so she kind of lost an arm, and now it's like cybernetic. Okay. Cybernetic. cybernetic. So imagine a woman with one cybernetic arm with the chaps, the cowboy hat. Nice. So a female the leather vest. is basically cable. Well, cowboy though, not <laughs> okay. mounted, more okay. cowboy. cowboy. Yeah, with kind of a cable arm. But despite the fact that she had the cybernetic arm that you could have equipped with a laser or some kind of blade or whatever, she still had six shooters. Six shooters. And we called her Wrangler. <laughs> hey, why not, eh? In the 90s, exactly. it was probably like really great, a great idea. But it's not the 90s anymore. If you, had, if you had pitched it at Image back then or Marvel, they probably would have picked it up. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? Sounds Thank like God they did it. Thank God they did it. Yeah. I mean, well, we didn't. So, yeah. yeah totally, yeah. It could have been a huge hit, though. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I'll bring no, them back. Worse. I mean, 90s is pretty hot right now. What's the great advice that you have learned in your tenure as, as being a Canadian artist yeah. that you could give to other Canadian creators and artists that are out there? Um, draw and don't stop drawing. And don't be afraid to tear down everything that you've done and start all over. Um, so drafts, drafting is super important, but, you know, constantly be doing it. Constantly be working at it. Constantly uh, think of how you could do what you've just done better, and um, hate everything that you've done, and then love what you're going to do in the future. If you want to be in comics, you got to make comics. You know, start somewhere, and then hopefully you do good enough stuff, good enough work that someone notices and takes you to the next uh, next level. See, that wasn't so bad after all. It was all right. All right. You can always check us out every Friday night on realityradio101.com. Our show is live at 7 p.m. You can check us out at geekhardshow.com. That's our, where our website is. You can find out all the other great information for us, as well as we're available through Facebook, Geek Hard Show, and twitter.com. You know, we're always there, at Geek Hard. There we go. So I want to thank the great Canadian comic creators we talked to today. Oh, they were awesome. Yeah, they were fantastic. Um, we've been here at the comic shop for like a number of minutes and you've gotten to read a bunch of comics, but I haven't yet. So I guess now is the time to just take a look. So thank you very much, people. So I can read. You can read now. We'll oh, see you. We'll sweet. see you next week. Let's see what we got here. It's the most exciting piece of television people will see. Reading. More people should read. So reading, I, is good. reading is good. It's weird because I picked up a book that's all images. There's no, there's not one bit of text. It is stylized. It's good. It's good. I like it.